Good morning, everybody. I am excited to come to you to share some more things that I've learned. My name is Tony Roten, and I'm here to help you, help you to be able to stand out above, above the rest, not in an arrogant, egotistical way, but in a confident, in a way that you show up. I want to help you be capable and whole. I want to help you be able to accomplish your dreams. And today, I decided, you know, what I'm going to do is I am just going to take something with one of the, from one of the young ladies that I've been working with. I'm going to dissect some of the issues and we're just going to pull out a piece of one of those things and then kind of focus on that. So that way, maybe these will be even more helpful to you. The first one we're going to talk about today, and this is, this is one that seems to be a biggie for a lot of people, and that's indecision. I'm not sure, quite sure if I spelt that right, but that's okay. Indecision. When we have to make choices in life, sometimes it's very hard. Sometimes it's almost overwhelming. And we've, we've got these, you know, here we are, and we're all happy and everything. And we're thinking life is great. Life is wonderful. But then all of these decisions need to be made. And these thoughts start to just permeate. What should I do? Should I take this job? Should I go here? Should I go to school? Should I, you know, should we take our kids to the hospital? Should we not take them to the hospital? A lot of these things just start overwhelming us. And unfortunately, our happy-go-lucky day starts to kind of go to a, uh, a little smirk and definitely not as happy as, as we were. Well, what do we do in this? What do we do in this? How do we make a decision without getting overwhelmed, without getting stuck and basically paralyzed by analysis because we overanalyze so much and we just are paralyzed by what to think, what to do, how to move forward. Well, that's what I want to talk to you about today is as we are making these decisions and as these decisions come in, we want to keep that happy-go-lucky attitude. We want to stay positive and upbeat. And that will actually help you in the decision. So you got a decision that you need to make. And this decision, it could be any number of things. But for all intents and purposes right now, Let's just say you have to move. You have to move. You've just been told you've got to move. All of a sudden, the weight comes down. All of a sudden, the, the pain, the anger, the frustration, everything that was kind of holding us back starts to just weigh on us. And we just feel like we have this rock or this boulder or really like we're carrying so much heavy stuff that's just pushing us down further and further and further. And... These thoughts can be, okay, do I get an apartment? Do I get a home? Do I get a condo? Do I share a room with someone? Uh, I mean, uh, share a house with someone? Do I move in with family? I mean, all of these, all of these decisions just start weighing on you. Well, no, there's not any one of these. It's a bad decision. Now, if we said you know, live in a cardboard box, I, I would question if you really need to do that. But that would be the only one out of this decision that I would say would be a little less questionable. But even that, there's people who have lived in, been homeless and lived in cardboard boxes and bounce back and have been made a tremendous life for themselves. 
So it really is how you look at it. But when you have all of these thoughts, it's just like a huge weight that sits on your head. And it just starts pushing you down, down, and down. And instead of this smile, like I talked about, you really start to kind of question everything. You start to question, am I making the right decision? Should I do this? And just the weight comes down. And as that weight comes down, it changes our attitude. It changes our personality. It changes everything about us. We start to sink. We start to be pushed down into a hole, really kind of just suppressed. Well, so how, what do we do? What do we do? I am a, a firm believer that, f- number one, is you do. You, you kind of study them out. Study it out. Study out each different scenario. What would it be like if I move into the apartment? And you ask all those questions. You start really dissecting it. You ask the questions of, what kind of a person would I be in an apartment? What kind of a people will I be hanging around? What would my area be like? What And start dissecting it. And then you do that with each one of these. Answering all of those questions. Answering who, what, why, when, what, how, to what extent. I mean, just all of it. Exhaust your questions. Because we are weighed down by it indecision i mean our, we we have a hard time making a decision and we're weighed down with our indecision because we lack the information we lack knowing what would it be like well if we go through and we start studying these out then i say okay narrow it down to 3 and when you narrow it down it starts to simplify it. And he's like, okay, well, I really don't want to live in a cardboard box. And I don't want to move in with family. And let's say, I don't really want to share a house. Okay, so now I've got three decisions. Apartment, home, and condo. Well, now we have to, we go to the next step. And we start, as we've narrowed it down to these three, then you start looking at, the other aspects. How much is it going to cost? Where would these apartments be? What kind of an area would it be in? Or a condo or home? We start asking these questions. Again, this applies to no matter what the decision you're making, whether it's college, whether it's children, whether you know whatever it is, it's, you just narrow it down. And then what I like to do is, again, narrow down to two now and how you do that is you're like okay when I think about the apartment or the home which one feels better oh actually I feel like a a single home would be better okay well if I think about the apartment and a condo which one feels better well the apartment you you have all this the condo you have these fees and you start wearing those out And you start paying attention to your feelings. Identify what it's like inside when you think about those things. And sometimes it's even to the point where you imagine yourself living in a condo. And so that's what I would say would be step four. You start imagining what it would be like in these two. Okay, if I lived in an apartment and you put yourself in there, I literally close your eyes. You put yourself in that situation. You put yourself surrounded by the people that you think would be in that condo or that apartment or, you know, again, whatever the decision is, it's the same process. You put yourself in there and you imagine what that feels like. And then afterwards, you do that with the next one. What does that look like? What does it look, you know, what, what's hanging on the walls? What's the exterior what does it feel like? And then after you've done that, it's like, okay, you know what? I really want to live more on my own. In an apartment, I have too many 
people around me. So I want to narrow it down to a home and a condo. And again, this is any decision. It's not just a home or trying to find a place to live right now. But this is a good example of how you can kind of break this down. Okay, well, now we go through that process again. We start imagining what it would live, be like to live in these two locations. We st- start imagining what it would be like to live in a home, what it would be like to live in a condo, how does it feel, what do our, if we have children, what are our children doing, if, if we have uh, plants or animals, which one's going to be the best for you, if you're a gardener, can you do it at a condo, can you do it at the home, you know, you start going through all these dis- all of these different scenarios and play them out in your mind. You come home after work and you walk into your house and it's like, oh, wow, you know, this is what this looks like. And you just totally picture, imagine it. You know, you have a countertop and you can actually see right into the kitchen. And as you see into the kitchen, you see some birds that are flying by the window. And I mean, just imagine it, dive into it and really feel it. And then you do that with the next one. Live it. Well, now, which one feels best? And if you say, well, they both feel okay. Well, then it doesn't matter. And that's the next thing is, it doesn't matter. Is realize that whatever the decision is, it's just a decision. We feel like if we make this decision, then our life is that set in stone. Or if we make this decision, our life is only going to be able to go a different way and it's going to mess us up. No. That's where I was getting stuck, thinking that any decision I made, it was like set in stone. I was refusing to buy trees because I didn't know where I wanted to plant the trees. I wasn't sure if I wanted to put a fire pit in because I wasn't sure. And when I started realizing, I said, you know what? What's the worst case scenario? And that's the next one is worst case scenario. Really, what is the worst case scenario? If you move into the home or you move into a condo, what's the worst case scenario? If I plant a tree and I don't like it, I dig it out. I dig it up, I spent that money, and I spent that time to do that. But, okay, I can go get some new grass seed and sod and put it back in there, and within a matter of six months, you wouldn't even be able to tell there was a tree there. Okay. These are the decisions that were holding me back from progressing and doing some of the things that I wanted to do. I held off for so long to get trees, to where if I had purchased the trees a long time ago and just made a decision, I would have some amazing fruit trees. But I was stuck, I did the indecision. But when I discovered this, when I discovered this process to go through and realize it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't. It's not going to alter the cha- our lives forever. Most of our decisions. Now, there are some decisions that are a little more heavy. There may be decisions that do alter your life forever. And those, you still follow the same process. But you really pay attention to what's inside of you what's happening inside of your heart, what's happening inside your stomach. You know, is it, are you twisted up in knots and stuff like that? If you are, then that's when we just need to step back, relax, and then look at it again. Now, I know that not all decisions fit perfectly in this, but so many do. So I challenge you to to look at the decisions you need to make right now. 
and see how this fits. See if this process works for you of studying it out, narrow, you know, putting all your different options on paper, and then narrowing it down to three. After you've narrowed it down to three, you narrow it down to two by just imagining it. And you imagine several times what it will look like in the three, then you imagine what it will look like in, down in the two. Then you start to live it. You start to live it in the sense of, it, again, it's a mental exercise, walking in to the situation or doing the situation, whatever the decision is for you, start to live what it would feel like and be like as much and as much detail as possible so that you can start to feel it. As you start to feel it, and if one decision all of a sudden starts to feel better, then you go that decision. If it doesn't, and you're not really getting a confirmation either or, then it doesn't matter. And what's the worst case scenario on choosing either of the final two options? And once you've narrowed it down and you have just those final two options, just choose one. Your life is not set in stone. And like I said, most of the decisions we need to make now are not decisions that are going to change our life forever and ever and ever. Could it alter our life? Absolutely. And it, could it make it really good? Yes. Could it make it really bad? Some decisions, yes, but most decisions, no. They're just decisions. We need to realize that the decisions we make today, most of them won't change the course of our life. It could be like a decision. Do I take my son to his friends or not? Do I feel like it? You know, that seems simple, but... When you have bigger decisions weighing on your mind and that dis those other things come into it, that's when you start to feel frustrated and you get upset with your children or you get upset with your friends and family. And this way you're able to step back and analyze and process and decide for yourself what feels best. And then as you are starting to make these decisions, decisions become easier because then this starts to happen automatically. This process starts to happen automatically. And a lot of times now I just go from, I study it out and I just drop down to the worst case scenario. I just drop down and say, okay, what's the worst case scenario if I choose this? What's the worst case scenario if I choose that? And then if I feel like I need to, I'll jump back up here and go through the rest of this process. But a lot of times, I don't need to. I just realize the worst case scenario and realize most of the times it really doesn't matter. So what decisions do you have to make right now? What is holding you back and preventing you from moving forward? Take the time to think that out. Study it. Write all the options down. And as you write them down, start noticing how you feel and then comparing, okay, option A to option B, option A to option C, option, and see which one feels best. Now, if you choose option A over all those others, then you know option A is it. And then you move down to option B, or at least you know option A is one of the possible choices. If you move down to option A, B, then you already know that you've chosen A over B, so it's already secondary to that one, but then you do the process again. Option B to option C, option B to D, B to E, B to F, and then you narrow it down. And you're like, oh, I actually liked D more. Well, now you've got A and D that have become one of the more relevant choices. And then you go to C, and you say, Okay, option C to option D, option C to E, to E to C to F, C to H, I, J. And you go through that process and narrow it down. If you already chose A over all these others, 
A is pretty strong. Then if you chose B over all these others, B is pretty strong. If you chose C, you know, or I mean D, and you miss C, then you remove C. You remove these others. Now you're working to three, A, B, and D. And then you look at option A compared to B, option A to D. And then you start to notice how you're feeling. And if A keeps coming out, you remove D. And then you start playing with just A and B. And as you narrow it down, as you go through this process, that's when living it and starting to truly visualize it really comes into effect and is powerful. So whatever the decision you have to make, study it out, write all the options down, just one, two, three, four, five, six, and then go through that process. As you do this, it is going to help start making quicker and faster decisions. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Please share this with others. I would love to help you in your life. No matter what your struggle is, I can help you get to the next level. It's what I do. You're amazing. Believe it. Have a fantastic day.